have you ever thought of how what you put in your mouth affects your vagina? If you haven't before, you will after this. Our next guest is here to show us how everything we eat is connected to our vaginal health, which makes sense. So Adrian Ramel is a yawning nutritionist who says that if we take proper care of our vaginas, they will take care of us. It's what we all want. And I, just like you at home, want to understand what exactly is a yawning nutritionist and do I need one? Adrian, please explain. Yes, everybody needs a yoni nutritionist. I am a holistic nutritionist that specializes in nutrition and wellness for women's sexual health, especially for chronic vaginal infections. Everybody needs a yoni nutritionist because I teach women how to eat for their vaginas. Okay, well, I love it. I was saying it wrong. So it's yoni. So yoni is yoni, another yes. word for the vagina. It's more of a holistic word that describes the vagina and vulva in women's reproductive system. I could have called myself the vagina nutritionist, but I thought <laughs> yoni is a little bit friendlier and it's a more of a holistic term, which describes me perfectly. I love it. Okay, how did you get into this line of work? I have struggled with my own vaginal health for years and I just thought if I am struggling with all of the things that I've dealt with, I'm surely not the only one. And I gave up my corporate career to go back to school to study holistic nutrition, to help women all over the world who are struggling with the same issues because it is so common, but nobody talks about it. And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to put it out in the world and to help women understand that diet is really important when we struggle with chronic vaginal health issues. We are making a point of it here on City Line. I'm getting rid of all of those taboos, so I'm happy you talk about it so we can talk about it here on the show. It's really important that we just get over ourselves. So what are the most common infections you see and what defines them as chronic? So the most common infections that I see and that I specialize in are chronic yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, HPV, and herpes, especially genital herpes. And so many women struggle with these infections and it's just because it's so taboo to talk about, a lot of women struggle and suffer in silence. And usually when we get these infections, we go to the doctor and they send us home with a prescription and then usually it goes away, but most of the time it comes back. And that's when we know, that's when I can tell that there, it goes much deeper than your vaginal health. There's something going on that's deeper in the body that's screaming for attention. And sometimes not even the medication works for some women. And so I'm here to kind of bridge that gap between that Western medicine approach and a holistic approach to say, listen, if you are experiencing these chronic health issues, you need to look deeper and it starts with your gut health. And so that's why diet is so important. Okay, so we're going to get into that right now. Like almost every other health concern, you have to think about diet, what you're putting into your body. And you're saying basically we need to start putting our vaginas on a specific diet. Yes, basically yes. My vagina has been on a diet for years. I have to live my life for my vagina because I have had so many issues and I am sensitive. And that's what I teach women how to do, is how to eat for your vagina. Because there's also so many other things that are connected to our vaginal health that are also connected to our gut health that people don't realize. And that's your endocrine system, which is responsible for your hormones, your nervous system, which is responsible for managing stress in the body, and your immune system, which we all know more of nowadays, is responsible for managing viruses like HPV and herpes, for example. And it's all connected to the health of our gut. That's why diet is so important. Let's talk about some of the shame surrounding some of these infections. Like how prevalent is it? How much does it have to do with the lack of knowledge and understanding? There is so much shame around these very, very common vaginal health issues that so many women on a daily basis reach out to me with. And it's really sad because these issues are so common, but they're just not talked about. And 
think about when we look, when we did sex education last time in school. Like we didn't get a lot of information on this, and it's really just based on fear and lack of knowledge. And that's where the shame and stigma comes. And that's where I'm here to talk about the, these things, to end the shame and stigma, and to say, hey, these things are really common, and there are things that you can do to manage it. We need more voices just like yours because it's time to stop being ashamed of yeah. our bodies as women and uh, share our knowledge and wisdom with each other openly. So what kind of tips can you give us to help manage our vaginal health? So if you are struggling with chronic infections like the ones I mentioned, yeast infections, BV, HPV and herpes specifically, UTIs as well, I'm going to tell you some of the things that you need to avoid and some of the things that you can include. So the things that you need to avoid are all of our favorite things, which is gluten, dairy, and sugar. <laughs> it's really hard for most people to give that up because I hear a lot of women say, don't take cheese away from me. Don't take you know, my favorite desserts away from me. But these are the things that are causing inflammation in our bodies, which cause inflammation in our guts which then cause inflammation in our vaginas, which creates a really nice environment for infections to thrive because it throws off our vaginal pH, our vaginal microbiome, which we've probably all heard of the gut microbiome. Our vagina has a microbiome as well. And it just creates a really nice space and environment for these infections to thrive. So you really have to be mindful of these foods if you are experiencing these chronic infections to either really reduce them or eliminate them from your diet as much as you can. You know, a lot of women come to me and say, oh, I take my probiotics, I eat yogurt, I'm drinking all the kombucha. But if you are somebody who struggles with chronic yeast infections, it's probably one of the worst things that you can eat because these fermented foods can feed the bacteria, the bad bacteria in your gut, causing it to overgrow. Because usually these, like kombucha for example, is fermented with sugar. And that is probably one of the worst things that we can put into our bodies for our vaginal health. Sugar is the worst. So what can we eat that's actually good for us? There's a lot of things that we can eat. And it's all, what my rule is, if it doesn't grow, don't eat it. If it does grow, eat it. Eat the rainbow of whole natural foods, bright colored, fresh foods as good quality as you can, which contain fiber and essential vitamins and nutrients and minerals that's so good for our gut, for our digestion. It's really important for our vaginal health. Really good fats. We're all conditioned to eat low fat this, non fat that, but good fats like avocado and olive oil, nuts and seeds, stuff like that is really good for our, our vaginal health in so many different ways. And making sure that you're getting enough protein at each meal, whether you're a plant-based or a meat eater, and eating three meals consistently every day will help you to maintain your blood sugar and create a really nice thriving environment for that microbiome and vaginal flora to flourish, keeping away those infections. Adrian, thank you so much. Excellent information there and information that we all need to hear.